Hey everybody, Ben, Somerville Gardener. So I've already got a bird bath, but I got another one. These are really cheap on Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description. So I got this really nice, somewhat lightweight bird bath, and I was wondering where's a good place to put a second bird bath, or where's just a good place to put a bird bath anyway. So I dove into the, the realms of the internets to find out the best placement for a bird bath, and I'm gonna share with you today what I've learned. First, a quick bit about this nifty little bird bath. It's a Pretty heavy duty, heavy gauged uh, plastic bird bath. And it's very lightweight, which it kind of concerned me because I don't want this thing tipping or blowing over. And one of the cool things about this bird bath is the top of it. It actually comes in different pieces, but when you go to put it together, almost there, it's hollow inside, which then allows you to fill it up with sand or water or something. I'm gonna dump part of a bag of sand that I have in here, just to kind of give it some extra weight and hold it in place. And then once you have it all together, it just spins right on together. There we go. And just like that, you've got a bird bath. So here's my original bird bath. It's not looking like it's in the best of condition, but we'll come back to that a little bit later in the video. So adding a bird bath to your yard is a fantastic way to attract a variety of different feathered friends. But if you put it in the wrong spot, it could probably do just a little bit more harm than it does good. So birds need water not just for drinking, but also for bathing. And a bird bath helps them keep their feathers uh, clean and pretty. Let's call it top flight condition. And adding water in your backyard is one of the simplest things that you can do to keep them clean, watered, bathed, and happy. Water is also vitally important to them during uh, the hot summer days. Uh, maybe not so much on a day like today. It's good and cloudy, which filled up my bird bath. So birds don't have the ability to regulate their body temperature on their own. They can't sweat and it's kind of hard for them to pant a whole lot. So being able to have access to that nice cool water, that's what allows them to cool off their, their whole body. So since they can't sweat, they rely on that respiration, that inhalation or in, inhaling, exhaling, just kind of to help uh, Kind of like a dog to help them get rid of some of that extra body warmth which means that as they start panting along they're going to dehydrate because all that water is just gonna leave their little mouths so them knowing where they can find some good clean water that's pretty important to their survival now i don't have any bird feeders yet but one of the things that i did learn in my research is that you don't want to put your bird bath right underneath your bird feeder uh, it sprinkles bird food down just causes waste and all kinds of nasty mold and junk to be start inside your bird bath. Not to mention that uh, wherever birds eat, they tend to poop, and that's not what you want. So make sure you put your bird bath at least 10, 15 feet away from your bird feeders. Now, one thing that was really tempting to me, it was putting my bird bath right up next to the window or somewhere really close to my window so I could see them. And even though I've got my blinds in the way, I just, I really don't want to run the risk of having a bird smack in my window when it gets scared and it tries to fly away real quick. But if you do want to put a bird bath right next to your windows make sure you put like some soapy just smear some like soapy film on it or leave your blinds closed like this so that they know that there's a window there and they can't get out that way okay where it looks like a good spot to put it how about right here in between these trees these bushes right here good fruit bushes right here up next to it seems like a great idea right well not really because even though it provides a nice cover for your birds birds aren't going to want to bathe and get comfortable right where a predator could be hiding and waiting to pounce on them real fast. So let's see if we can find a place that's more like 10, 15 feet away from any bird feeder and trees and bushes and fences and anything else that might make a bird a little uncomfortable to, you know, be at home at. Because I wouldn't want to be in the tub and have some mean old cat jump out at me. So one of the things that we can do is keep our bird bath here in a nice shady location. Let's see if we can find some place in the shade where we can see it too. We want to be able to see our little feathered friends flapping and chirping and uh, having a good old time out of our bird bath. Otherwise, you know, what, what's the point? Well, I mean, it's for the birds, but it's for us too, right? Because we want to be able to see them. Okay, so I've already got the one bird bath over here, which is in a pretty good location, and I can see it out my window because that right there is the sunroom, and that's where my home office is. So I can look right out the window and see them. And one of the things that I've been noticing is that there's been an uptick of bird population in the area since, you know, installing all these trees and doing all this stuff. They tend to not like it too much in the hot sun, so I figured a nice shady spot. That'd be a good spot for them. And the spot right outside my office window would allow me to see both the bird baths and see you know, if a different type of bird likes a different type of bath or, you know, if they have a preference or if the shady spot gets more activity than the out in the sun spot. So what I think I'm going to do is right here next to Lizard Tower, that's what I've uh, nicknamed this guy right here uh, for the uh, the anoles and some other lizards we got around and the geckos. I'm going to put the bird bath right here next to it. Let's go with maybe something a little bit closer to the air conditioner. 
there we go i should be able to see that pretty well out my office window now i can see my my birds taking baths and my lizards crawling around and doing their little uh, throat thingy i should have a video up shortly about my uh, my lizard lounge my lizard towers that i've got set up they attract a fair amount of lizard population it's kind of cool but back to the birds. So regular maintenance is also a pretty important thing to do whenever you have a bird bath. You wanna make sure that you change the water every couple of days when, uh, whenever it's not raining enough to keep it filled up. Just, you know, splash it out with the hose and just rinse it out and fill it up. The other thing is every couple of weeks, you might see that you get some good uh, buildup and growth going from, you know, dirty birds, algae, all kinds of other stuff that might be growing in here. I've got this nifty little Libman brush that I got at the little cleaning section and it does a pretty good job of basically just scrubbing it and cleaning it like a toilet. Yeah, that's pretty nasty. Let's rinse it out. Yeah, with a simple garden hose, you can just... You can actually kind of just hose it out, get any extra debris or anything out of it, and then just go ahead and fill it back up. There we go, ready for the next time. Yeah, that looks way better than it did to begin with. Still a little bit in there, but yeah, the good thing is the birds aren't all that picky. But of course we want it to be clean enough for them. And now the most important part, filling up the bird bath and you're liking and subscribing this video because it means so much to a small channel like this one. And something else you can do if you feel the need to do so, you can add a few clean rocks to one of the sides of the bird bath just to give them a nice little place to climb in and out of. It's also nice in case for us we get frogs and I don't want a frog to drown in here. So this will give them a nice little spot to land on, crawl up out of, whatever it is they need to do. And having just a bunch of rocks makes it a nice little place for them to hang out and hopefully invite their friends, come often, and leave happy. There we go. I kind of like how that turned out. That looks pretty.